Zero Ranger. Also, I just realized if you replace zero with the number zero, you get orange R. And given the fact that orange is half the palette and citrus is a very big theme in this game, including the fact that every time you die you get some delicious orange facts, I'm betting that was a very intentional, very dumb pun that I'm only noticing now. And I kind of love it. This was a game that was gifted to me on Steam, like, literally the day after I added it to my wishlist and found out about it. Like, I, I was just browsing Steam and said, Oh, that looks like a neat little shmup. It has a cool little art style. I want to see what that's about. Next day, boom! It was in my library. And I've been playing it since, and I have to say, this is a ridiculously kick-ass shmup that I think I can recommend to basically anyone. Because... It's ridiculously easy to get into if you're a beginner, and it's very, very forgiving. It's constantly encouraging you to keep playing by rewarding you, and it gets incredibly challenging. So even the masters of shmups should find a little bit of challenge in this game. The plot of this game is actually kind of surprising because it actually has a story for a shmup, and actually a very deep and involved one. It follows an invasion from space. Stop me if I'm going too fast for you. The evil alien armada, led by Green Orange, has come to invade the Irath, and now it's up to the Doomsday Ultimate Megaship Grapefruit to save the day. Except that it, along with its pilot, kind of immediately disappeared on that mission. And with military contracting being what it is, and done by the lowest bidder, while there are two ships left, they are both missing about 75% of their armaments. Have fun as the backup pilots to try and save the day. I think that Zero Ranger is quite an impressive game from a story perspective. I would almost liken this akin to something like Undertale, where yes, you could reductively define it by its genre, in this case a shmup, but while it is a game that is part of that genre, and it is a game that borrows heavily from games that inspired it, it's also a game that actively tries to twist and reinvent those conventions that it borrows and learns from. It's a game that's constantly trying to change what you expect from it and challenge your understandings of it. It's a game that has a very, very deep plot that actually involves you, the player, and gives you meaningful, important choices that question who you are as a person and how much faith you put in yourself. It's a game that is constantly trying to push the idea of enlightenment. And let me tell you, attaining enlightenment in this game, a little bit tricky. But it's also a game that is actively, constantly throwing stuff at you, and every single small choice that this game made, I'm convinced had some sort of narrative meaning to it. Looking back on the footage, I can see small bits from like the first level and the second level, you know, being folded into the end of the game, it's like, oh, that actually has meaning there, and that actually has mechanical purpose. This game is incredibly well thought out, and the people who worked on it did a really, really impressive job with it, and honestly, if you wanted to analyze the most, like, minute details about this game and how much importance it has on the game itself and the story, you'd be here forever, but it would be an amazing time because you'd get to play more of this game. Now the first thing that really struck me about gameplay to Zero Ranger, and I want to stress this for everyone out there, is this game is ridiculously easy to get into, and it's, it's very approachable from even someone who has zero experience with shooters. The first stage is filled with very few enemies, even fewer bullets, and it's honestly, it might, it might be a bit of a challenge. I think the first time I played it I died once, but it's not very hard. There's very little going on. Your ship, whichever one you choose to fly, only has one shot, so it's not an overly complicated control scheme starting from the beginning, and they don't throw too much at you early on. But even if you die, don't worry, because this game is constantly trying to reward you as well as make things easier for you if this is too much of a challenge for you. Every time you game over, your score gets added to a total cumulative point value, and when that point value hits certain thresholds, you will permanently unlock continues. Basically, even if you die and fail, you're going to be giving yourself more continues in the future permanently, which ultimately means you're going to have more lives and you'll be able to continue moving forward, no matter what, all while being rewarded, again, even if you fail, which is, you know, still rewarding you and making you feel better even though you failed. And if that's still too much for you, well, don't worry, this game doesn't ask you to one credit clear it or even clear it on a single set of continues. 
Every time you clear a level, you can start from the next one next round if that's what you want to do. But if level selection is not your bag, well don't worry, you can still start from the beginning at any time. But, and I want to stress this, no matter how easy this game is to get into, it's still going to give you a challenge eventually. And I, I have to give this game credit because it has probably the smoothest difficulty curve I've seen in a shmup ever. Because while I was playing this game, I was constantly challenged more and more, but I didn't notice it. Really, I, I felt like, you know, this game had a it didn't even really have a curve so much as it had a flat line. It wasn't until I went back to the earlier stages to either get more lives or just, you know, see if I could get a little bit further in one credit or go on to the second loop because as a shmup it requires you to actually beat the game about four times before you see the full story. You know, it wasn't until I went back to stage one or a variant of stage one that I realized, holy crap, this game starts off so incredibly easy. I took zero damage for the first three stages, but by the end it does get very Don Maku bullet hell. It, like, it, it will actually kick you when you're down and laugh at you when you get dirt in your face, you know? This, this game does get incredibly hard later on, but you never really notice it because it's only taking you step by step, moving it up a little bit harder every single time. And at that point, your skills have kind of at least improved to a degree where you're getting more and more used to it, or at the very least, you've got more continues that you can kind of power through it. This game has such a smooth difficulty curve that you honestly don't notice it until you have to go back and experience the early game stuff. It's kind of amazing like that. Also, if this game sounds too easy for you, Mr. Veteran Shmup Guy, don't worry. In addition to having optional extra continues to help you through the game, it kind of has a dynamic difficulty in terms of gameplay as well. So, you know, you could play without continues if you want, you're not forced to use them. But more importantly, as you do better and better, and I think this is based on a timer thing, but as you kill more and more enemies, defeating them and not dying, occasionally gold enemies will show up. And these guys are worth a lot more points, but they're a lot trickier, so if you're doing better in this game, this game will be throwing higher value targets at you, but they're going to be a lot trickier to take down. Meaning the better you do, the harder the game gets. But the easier you need this game to be in order to complete it, the easier it becomes. This game has an incredibly cool dynamic difficulty curve that, you know, you don't see that in too many shmups out there, and I really appreciate that the game will actively observe your skills and say, okay, you're, you're doing good, let's let's turn up the heat a little bit. But, oh, you're, you're having some problems, don't worry, you got some lives, you got some continues, we won't throw anything too hard your way, you know? They want to give you a challenge, but they don't want to completely stomp you into the dirt at least immediately. The developers really went out of their way to make this game as approachable as possible, and it's amazing for it. Now, the second thing that really stuck out to me about this game, gameplay-wise, and, and this goes back to the story a fair bit, is the theme of choice. Because choice gets implemented into pretty much everything in this game. But the biggest, most standout thing about it is every time you clear a level and beat a boss, you are presented with two black pearls. Each of these pearls contains a power-up for your ship because, as I may remind you, military contract be what it is, and you have an incomplete one. So it's not until you're cleared three separate stages that you actually get your fully kitted out machine. Now each ship has a slight variant on these abilities, but they are kind of more or less consistent between the two. The first stage's choices either give you a forward wide spread shot, which honestly I didn't find all that particularly useful especially because I played the ship that actually has an inherent spread shot that looks like a bird spreading its wings in flight. I really like that bullet pattern, by the way. You don't get to see it too often because there's usually too much flying at you, but it's it's very nice. But the, the spread shot from the first stage, not super, super useful. Or your second choice is you get a bit of a back shot, which at least with my ship was sort of a spreading flamethrower. And this was like the single most useful ability in the game because stuff comes up from behind you and that does a lot of damage and spreads out really, really quite a bit. It seriously is one of the most effective power-ups in the game, I think. The second stage's power-ups contain a charge shot, which gives you a little bit of a shield, and honestly, you're not going to see much of this because I never used it. Uh, seriously, you get a shield and that sounds really good, but it's not very effective and the charge takes like literally a minute before it's useful. Not a very useful ability. The other choice is a lock-on shot with sound effects that remind me an awful lot of Panzer Dragoon, which was nice. This is also not super effective, it, it does track pretty much any enemy, but more importantly, it hits things in the background. 
and this is when you start realizing you're kind of playing on a Xevious level sort of twin height dual stage sort of thing because now that you can hit things in the background you can find all sorts of hidden secrets as well as bonus points as well as sometimes lives as well as hitting enemies in the background which will appear behind you in the foreground if they're not dealt with and being able to take care of any problem that comes up from behind before you have to deal with it definitely changes the way you approach combat. It's it's a huge expansion on tactics, really. And you don't even really notice it, or at least I didn't until, uh, you know, I'm talking about it right now. You know, it wasn't until this point that I realized, oh crap, stage one, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background. Didn't even realize it because I couldn't deal with it. Also, it lets you really mess with the Gradius mini-boss in the first stage by stealing his power-ups. Doesn't change the fight, that'd be cool if it did, but you can really bug him. And I love it, and that's a great little secret and reference, and this game is full of them. The final weapon choice in Stage 3. It allows you to unlock the Zero Ranger form, which basically allows you to turn to a big kick-ass mech. Your weapons of choice? Either a sword that lets you slow down and deflect bullets, which is honestly not that super useful, I didn't find. Or alternatively, you can gain the power to touch the untouchable, break the unbreakable, and destroy pretty much everything in your way with a big ass giga drill. And at this point, the game becomes a giant Gurren Lagan reference that had me grinning ear to ear, you know, for the first 30%, and then that anime made some decisions I didn't care for, but the game is still good. While you have these two choices, each ship will change them slightly differently, like the big drill on the ship I used, every time you destroy something it adds a bit of a debris field around it, increasing your size of your attack radius as well as giving you a bit of a shield. Whereas the other ship, you do some damage and then suddenly the drill grows giant. And what's really really cool is you can trace these abilities back to the bosses themselves. Like they were holding on to these pearls and you can trace the roots of your own strength to the other enemies. And without spoiling too much, there's a great deal of narrative purpose to this. And going back to the beginning, there's a lot of important choice to this. You can choose how to outfit your ship in order to match your playstyle. You can choose how to approach combat with this. You can make a lot of very important choices here. Hint, hint. In fact, while I mentioned that this game requires four loops of the story in order to see it through to the end, by the end of the second loop, this game actually posits a very important choice. Well, at this point, you've had a few very important choices, but there's one that could change the course of everything. Now, without spoiling too much, this game posits a simple question. Do you have the skills? and do you have the faith to put into those skills? If you say no, no harm, no foul. Go back and do it again until you can. But if you do, the game asks you to back up that faith and to prove those skills. And should you fail, make the ultimate sacrifice for your hubris. And this makes a nice little lead-in to the first of three real issues I have with this game. It's not a perfect game by any means or measure, but it's pretty awesome all the same. Problem number A, when this game gives you the ultimate choice. Well, it has a lot of deep meaning in a lot of sense. It forces you to really analyze your own abilities and it asks you to put your skills to the test, provide you're willing to. But should you fail, there is a harsh, harsh penalty. And I think a lot of people are going to be heavily demoralized by that. I know I kind of was. I messed up four times before I finally finished that chunk of the game. It, uh, it was hard. But while that's a bit demoralizing, the victory is very sweet. The problem, however, is the challenge it provides you kind of plays out differently than the rest of the game. And if you're not prepared for that and you don't know what to do, you're going to be completely lost and you're going to have made a very very costly decision without really knowing what you're getting yourself into and the fact that the game kind of throws itself into a weird sort of different way to play is a problem and the only other time you'd ever really know that this is even a mechanic in the game is specifically in the penultimate boss fight you can kind of utilize the same mechanic in order to like skip a couple of its phases and I did because that last phase of that fight is kind of really really tough but unless you actually know that this is a mechanic that's in play, you're gonna be completely lost and you're going to have made a huge, huge mistake based on mechanics you didn't even realize were in play. The game is very, very bad about kind of telegraphing this, which sucks, especially when the cost is so high. Problem number B 
is that this game doesn't have a quit to title screen menu, except it does. Uh, basically, if you mess up and you want to like restart, you can restart from the beginning of the game, that is level one, or you can start at the beginning of the stage you're on. There's no way to simply go back to the start screen, hit level select, and start from where you were with all your pearls intact. Except there is. Now, bear in mind, I'm playing with a controller, but if you press start, you're given an options menu, but quit to the main menu is not an option, nor is, you know, go back to level select or whatever. Instead, if you want to go back to the menu to, like, level select and, you know, make some modifications in order to, you know, enhance your experience, you have to hit escape, which opens up, like, a secondary options menu that you can't access from the start button, at least on a controller, which is more than a little confusing. And, and what's more baffling is I think if you press F1, which is a button I never use because I don't like my keyboard all that much for action games because my bad hands, it actually unlocks like a third menu that just like overlays everything to give you hints on like what your control scheme and like what all the F buttons do. It's at the very least the escape menu could just be thrown into the standard pause menu. So the fact that it's not is really obtuse. And I think unless you're just messing with your keyboard, which, again, I wouldn't personally because I don't play with my keyboard, I really can't, you know, it's a lot more convoluted than it needs to be. It could at the very least roll in the escape menu with the pause menu because they functionally do mostly the same thing. And the fact that it's just missing options is more frustrating than anything. The third problem I have with this game, the, the final one, and granted, while the other two are more of an objective problem, this is more of a personal issue I have, and it has a bit of spoilers, so, you know, skip ahead if you don't want to hear this, but you know that awesome super ship that disappeared, the grapefruit? Basically, if you do the exact right things, you get to experience a level as the grapefruit, and it is so incredibly kick-ass. It, it basically plays like a completely different game, and, you know, I, I've said this at the beginning, this game is kind of like Undertale. It likes questioning the root mechanics that this game borrows, and it likes to twist them and change them and present you with whole new different ways to play from time to time, and in some cases whole new games, hint hint. But when you get to play as the Grapefruit, they basically redesign the entire first stage as a cave shooter, and I love the cave shmups, they're some of my favorites of all time, and I really love the Grapefruit shooter, but unfortunately, it's only one stage. And to be fair, this is an important narrative decision, as is basically every other mechanic, event, and thing in this game. There's an important narrative choice behind that. But, you know, devs, I, I know you're listening. If you could just, you know, casually go back in there and create a whole game mode around this, just for me, I I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Love. Me. Playing as the grapefruit in grapefruit mode, even if it's just a one-stage thing, was probably the highlight of this game for me, just because they nailed it so perfectly to Magic Cave Shooter that I honestly was confused for a moment when it went back to the standard gameplay. It was just so much fun and I would just kill for, like, even a completely disconnected extra mode where you just play through the game as the grapefruit because it was just so damn fun. It should also be noted that the developers really seem to go very far out of their way to make sure that enemy patterns and placements never really repeat. They kind of made every single encounter with even the most basic enemies their own unique things, their own unique challenge and puzzle that needs to be solved, usually with evasion and bullets. The fact that they're constantly throwing more and more at you and in different ways keeps it fresh. And that's just the main story mode. I mean, I haven't even talked about vanilla mode or light mode as some people know it as. This is a mode that every stage in this game is sort of chopped up into like thirds. And basically this mode posits that you will go through the stages, but every single transition to a new chunk of a stage will instead give you a chunk of a different stage. So you know, you start off with level one, but then you get to the second chunk and suddenly you're like in level three, and then suddenly you're in like the chunk of level two, and then you're back into one, and it has some bonus stuff, and it has some exclusive enemies, bosses, and like secret stuff, as well as just a whole bunch of other stuff that's exclusive to this mode that makes it worth playing on its own. And if that wasn't enough to tell you this game has tons and tons of content, there's a metric crap ton of unlockables. It takes a while to actually be able to unlock them, but there's a lot of challenges in-game to complete, and that provides you with points that you can pay to buy extras in-game, which which in turn means you're going to be playing this game for a hell of a long time if you want to see everything. And it's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be fun. You have four loops of a very deep, impressive story. And if the idea of having to play through the game effectively four times to see the whole story isn't terribly appealing to you, 
I will tell you that every single loop does change the game a little bit. The world changes slightly, enemies change slightly, events that play out are slightly different. Whole events completely change. It's genuinely very cool, and every single loop of this game plays a little bit differently, making it its own completely unique experience. Just, you know, kind of similar to what you've already experienced. This game is constantly throwing new stuff at you without breaking its stride, and it just feels so damn good to play. This might be, mechanically speaking, one of my favorite shmups of all time. I, I'm definitely willing to put this on, like, a list of top 10 shmups for me. It's, it's just that damn good. It would be surrounded by, like, Fantasy Zone 2 and a bunch of cave stuff, but damn if this game doesn't deserve it. This game is incredible. If you've ever had any interest in shmups, or you're a veteran of shmups, or you want to see a really cool story-driven shooter, and there aren't many of those, this game nails it. Almost perfectly. Just add, add more of that one mode, please. Seriously, do it for me. I love it. The overall presentation to Zero Ranger, or Ranger, or in Jar, is, like, amazing. This is actually how I first noticed it. I saw a screenshot of this, and I'm like, what? what is this binary color scheme? Things are either orange or green. What's up with that? And like everything in this game, there's, you know, a meaningful choice behind it. But because the color palette only contains two colors and like four shades of each, it gives it a very, very simple, bare bones look. But you know, while it does come across as very, very minimalistic, that helps it stand out against pretty much every single thing else out there. And there is a modifiable palette, although I think you have to unlock it. I didn't actually notice until I got to a point where it was kind of forced upon me, so um, yeah, I, I'm not actually sure if this is optional or what. I. Apologies for that, but you know visually this game looks incredible. The cutscenes look great. The sprite art is just Breathtaking at times the amount of detail they crammed into these sprites is beautiful. I, I love the ship designs I love the mecha designs. I love the like backgrounds and world design everything about this game visually just looks stunning and audio wise this game's soundtrack absolutely slaps. Like, seriously, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, if you can afford, if it is in your budget to get the version of this game that comes with its soundtrack, do it without hesitation because it is amazing. I am gonna have to go out and actually get the soundtrack myself because, oh man, the soundtrack to this game is too damn good. Uh, lots, lots of really cool music to, uh, play this game too. I, I personally like uh, the theme to one of the final levels, like when you're finally invading the enemy base, it just, it hits so hard and so fast, and then like the screen scrolls really, really fast and it gets really challenging, but it's like, oh, I've prepared for this. I am ready. Let's go. But this game also has some like really, really nice calm tracks, some nice ambient stuff. It, it's not just hard hitting, hard rock and riffs, but it's got a lot of those too which makes me happy. Overall, the soundtrack to this game is tremendous, and, you know, I, I think the soundtrack, if it wasn't for a very beautiful game, if it wasn't for an amazing game, if it wasn't for a game that had a lot of intelligent thought and decision put into it, as well as a great, great story, the soundtrack to this game is worth it alone. Now, if you want Zero Ranger, Oranger, or Orange R on Steam right now, it is about 1350 and if you want the bundle with the soundtrack and you should because it's amazing that's about $23 and you know for a shooter that's remarkably inexpensive like seriously I have bought cave shmups for hundreds of dollars and I don't regret that and I don't regret this game if I paid for it for that much but I didn't pay for it at all actually this was gifted to me by everyone's favorite color with two sets of repeated letters, vermilion with two N's. Like I said at the top, you know, I, I had just put this on my like wish list and he had sent it to me, which is quite serendipitous. He wanted me to drop a link to his Twitch page, so you know, go over there and tell him thanks for me. Seriously, I, I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. You know, huge shout outs to Vermilion for providing this. This game is amazing, and I have to say this is uh, possibly one of the best games I've played this year. Certainly one of the most memorable. It's got probably the best soundtrack of any game I've played this year, with maybe one or two exceptions, and it is easily one of my favorite shmups. And bear in mind, this is in a year where I got to revisit the first game I ever played, a shmup that's very near and dear to my heart. Zero Ranger is a game that clearly has a lot of passion put into it. It has a lot of thought. They wanted to make a game that makes you 
really want to pursue enlightenment. I, I'm not sure if I... <laughs> I mean, I have an achievement that tells me I've, I've pursued enlightenment and attained it. I'm not sure if I've actually become enlightened, but I got to experience an amazing story. I got to make some really deep, meaningful choices. I got to have a very sort of dynamic, customizable challenge of a shmup, and I want to keep playing this game. This game is amazing. I mentioned this before, but I think I could easily throw this on a list of my favorite shmups of all time. Easily on Steam, I, I think I've got maybe one other shmup on my account right now that comes close to how much I like this game, but this, I think this is my top shmup for my Steam account so far. Zero Ranger. It's awesome, and if you can afford it, especially with the soundtrack, get the soundtrack, it's really, 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 really damn good. Uh, you should absolutely play this. If you have any interest in shmups, if you're a veteran of shmups, if you've ever wanted to try these, even if you don't think you'd be good at it, this one is incredibly approachable, and I am begging you to try this game, because it is just worth it. I quite love Zero Ranger, and I think this is a very, very special game that needs all the attention in the world. And if you have any interest in shmups, even passing interests, I think this one's worth looking into, because it's just that damn good. And if nothing else, you get to learn a whole bunch of facts about oranges. So, there's, there's that. Hey, did you know that oranges are called oranges because oranges are orange? You'll learn that in this game. Mm -hmm. Orange you glad I didn't say banana!